Pictures we were never meant to see. The unseen face of Africa's longest war. A war that is now entering a new and more bloody phase. This footage reveals that since oil began flowing, a once weak and demoralized government army has become one of the best equipped in Africa. But nobody dreamt that oil was buying ballistic missiles like this. We obtained this unique footage and showed it to the defense analyst, Paul Beaver. I've never heard of a short-range tactical ballistic missile being used in the war in, in Sudan. I think this is the first time that I've certainly seen any evidence of it whatsoever. Um, and it does mark, in my, in my view, an escalation. If it is what I think it is, then it's the first time we've seen an Iranian missile uh, in Sudan, a range of about 110 kilometers, a very indiscriminate weapon. It has a, uh, an error of about one to two kilometers. Five months ago, Channel 4 documented the scorched earth tactics being used to clear southern Sudan for exploration by international oil companies. We warned then that oil was paying for bigger and better weapons. Up until now, we've only had anecdotal evidence that oil money has been used to fund uh, big projects like buying weapons. Uh, I can't really see how they're going to have funded buying a short-range tactical ballistic missile any other way than by in some way bartering oil. This young man was one of two government cameramen who filmed this offensive. He died on the battlefield and his tapes were seized by the rebels of the Sudan People's Liberation Army. They show a concentration of fire one American expert has likened to Vietnam. They are fired from here. Malik Agar is the SPLA commander who this turned back the government case. offensive. And he says eight missiles were fired, half of them near military positions. Called, uh, it's a very devastating weapon. Even, even in terms of, of, of sound itself, it's very, I mean, it's, it's very effective. It's uh, very scaring. Before oil, the whole, the whole fighting was between two weak opponents. Uh, literally between two weak opponents. That is no longer the case. This is a new and more powerful army. The government says oil is paying to develop the South, not to destroy it. But no matter how damaged the film, this missile launch suggests otherwise. The Sudanese Chargé d'Affaires in Nairobi denied that his government has acquired and is using yes. missiles. In the war in the South. This is not totally, this is not true. It is totally baseless, simply because there is no targets in this war to be targeted by missiles. The targets are mainly troops. They are not having any fixed installations to be targeted by missiles. For the last three years, government troops and militias have been systematically clearing oil-rich areas of southern Sudan. Despite growing condemnation of the government's scorched earth tactics, British companies supply much of the hardware for the oil industry and do much of the intelligence work. This region in the southeast of the country is the latest area to be opened and cleared for oil. We had heard uh, rumors that there, were going, there was going to be oil production now in that area. There's already one uh, area of wells that are producing, but we were hearing that there might be new surveys as well. And as no sooner had we heard this information than we began to see villages that came under attack and large numbers of people being displaced. You're well, seeing GOS government militias literally chasing these people into the bush as they run women and children being shot at as they, as they flee for their lives to areas of safety. These government troops went into battle armed to the teeth, their morale sky high. But the offensive ended in tragedy for them. The SPLA says hundreds died and most of their weapons were captured. We capture tanks, we capture trucks, we capture uh, weapons, a quantity that could make us defend ourselves for uh, some time. Oil is arming both sides in this stalemated war. It is perpetuating a human tragedy so vast that the world no longer takes notice.
launched a missile, you're, you're not going to hear it coming. And when you finally do, it will be too late and you'll be in its path. It's, I think it's, a, it, it's terrifying. No one's going to be able to protect themselves, not the civilians, not the agencies working on the ground. It, you know, when I saw this, it just adds a terrifying new dimension to what we're going to all have to deal with in South Sudan. The companies investing in Sudanese oil talk of development and through development, peace. But in these badlands where the oil originates, that hope has died.